Hey everybody, it's Paul again. Um, I have another uh, app from y'all today from Kenwood Exelon. Um, I just want to ask y'all a question first. Uh, what do you get when you cross the Kenwood Exelon XR 400 minus 4, range about 299, and the XR 600 minus 1, also range at 299? Uh, what do you get when you combine these two together? You can give up already? Alright, uh, you get the XR 900 by 5. This is a 5 channel digital amplifier. Uh, this the, this amp actually has the XR 400 by 4s components inside here, as well as I don't have the fourth, third hand the, the XR 600 by 1 components that has inside here as well. So they can find both of those amps in the one uh, for a good price at 499, and also still with a two year warranty. Um, this is a beast of an amp. I have installed this amp in many vehicles, Jeeps, trucks, Fords, F 250s, and it's plenty of power. Anyway, um, this amp has about, about 600 watts by 4, and um, with 400 watts RMS by 1, and the 4 ohms, or 75 watts by 4, and a 600 watts RMS at 2 ohms. Um, so anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get zoomed in on it, we'll see what's inside the box, and then we'll get zoomed in a little closer on it. open this uh, big box up here. Uh, first thing we see... Uh, is the instruction manual with uh, its three uh, Allen screws, uh, wrenches I mean, with screws, and on the back of the warranty card. And pull the amp out, there's nothing else in the box. We'll set that off to the side. Uh, it's got styrofoam. And da -da 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 -da. little foam bag it's in. All right, and here is the amp, and um, go ahead and see if we can get zoomed in a little closer, and we'll take some measurements. All right, uh, here's the side of the amp right here. Uh, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take uh, the XR404 uh, amp, and I'm going to set it on top so you can see the difference in size. It is a little bigger amp. Um, like I said, it is encasing two, two amps of this size in one installation. Uh, it, they're both the same same uh, I guess depth I guess but it's just a little bit taller um, you can see right there it's a little bit taller let's see if I can get it a little bit um, and a little bit longer so anyway it's taking oh, we have another amp here for a quick demonstration it's taking these two amps and putting them in here so you imagine all that power ready to shoot out these little uh, speaker terminals right there or speaker holes where the wires go all right i'm gonna set those off to the side i'm gonna zoom in a little closer and what i'm going to do is get my little handy dandy ruler out and take some actual actual measurements uh, of course it may not be exactly precise but it'd be pretty close all right uh we'll go from uh, from end to end as usual and put my ruler upside down because i wish the numbers were in a different order but Anyway, uh, it's looking to be from end to end ten and a half inches. So we got ten and a half inches this way, and now we're going to turn it sideways. And we're not going to count any things protruding over here, like the fuses and R and RCA inputs. Just the, just the amp itself, and it looks like it's almost six and three quarters. So we got. Uh, I want to say ten and a half. Double check and make sure. Yeah. So we got you know ten and a half this way, almost six and three quarters this way, and now for the height it is two inches. All right. So now we got ten and a half inches length, almost six and three quarters this way, and two inches from from top to bottom, and it's completely flat all across. Nice. Uh, black brushed aluminum look uh, on here. Um, if you can see it, uh, we got the Exelon words, we got you know XR 900 by 5 Class D 5 channel digital amplifier right in the center. It's got the logo which also doubles as a power light and it's got Kenwood and this little strip right here as you probably notice on the other XR videos I've done and I've, I'll put a link to the video Right there for the 400, and over, and over here, if I can get my finger pointing right direction, for the 600. And what, and what you do is you take one of the Allen screws that come with the 
a little baggie of three and take the smallest one and what you do is you pull out these little tiny screws that I, you can't see They're, well you still can't see it so right there a little tiny screw oh, I wish I knew the boundaries of the camera anyway uh, there's, there's, two, there's two screws that hold this little panel in and what this panel does come on come on over here. and what it does is this little panel right here hides the the wire tightening screws on the inside this is where you use your other allen wrenches uh, the biggest ones for your power and the rest of them for speakers and internal wire what you do is you loosen these out stick your wire in you know from this direction into here and then tighten it back down so you know the wire will come out so anyway uh, that's what that is uh, put that outside just for a second and uh, now in here um, this amp has three 40 amp fuses so you, you know this amp means all power it's got freaking 40 amp fuses and there's three of them right there ready to go uh, right here we got the battery this is Except 4 gauge, I would put the, the best 4 gauge in there. I wouldn't go buy no cheap 4 gauge from anywhere. I would spend a little extra and get some real 4 gauge. Uh, power wire. And then right here in the center between the battery and the ground, uh, this is the pecan or power connection or remote turn on. That's what turns the amp on. And right here is another 4 gauge input for ground. Uh, this is speaker output A. Yep. Left positive, left negative, right negative, right positive. And if you don't notice right here, it has bridge. So you got left positive and right negative. If you want, to, if you want to bridge like a subwoofer or something on it, I don't know why you would do that because it has its own subwoofer outputs. Uh, it also got speaker output B, left positive, left negative, right negative, right positive, and the same thing as before, left positive, right negative to bridge um, a subwoofer or, or or maybe some sort of mid, maybe a mid bass driver or something. And over here, this is the 600 watts R, but it's at 2 ohms. Uh, positive, negative, sub over output. And it, will, it could peak at it. So anyway, that's all the speakers and power connections here. Uh, right past this down here, we got your, your A and B line in. You got left and right, left and right. And this last section right here, this is your RCA inputs for the subwoofer. So... If your radio has three outputs, uh, you can plug your, your front, rear, and your subwoofer in, and that way you can have use all five channels like you normally would uh, with all the speakers plus a sub in, in your vehicle. All right, let me go ahead and quickly put this uh, little cover back on so I can turn the amp around and show you some, all the other features. I'll take a second. They're real short, so they don't have far to go. All right, we're already showing the, the top. Uh, both ends, this one and this end, they look just, just like this. Nice side heat sinks. Um, bottom is just a, a plate with a, you know, your, your serial number and model number and something to do with the FCC. And over here, this is the, the actual business end. As you see, this this amp does have a fan built into it, so it's going to keep it cool. It, it, uh, in fact, I've, I don't think I've ever seen this amp get warm enough to really burn you at all. In fact, uh, it's always, always to me, always seems to run cool, but it's probably got a fan in it, so that's probably why it runs cool anyway. So anyway, I'm going to use my Allen wrench as a pointer. Uh, actually, it's probably not that bad. Um, um, over here, we got your input sensitivity for the front, rear, and subwoofers. I'm just going to briefly go over the sections. Right in the center we got base boost level for the DB from 0 to 18. Uh, next over we got low LPF which is low pass frequency. That's in Hertz it goes from 50 to 200 on, on the sub. And da -da 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 -da, high pass frequency uh, it goes from 50 to 200 for A and 50 to 200 for B. And down here uh, we got under A we off and uh, our high pass filters which off means full range and high pass generally means you're going for tweeters and stuff or maybe some sort of higher mid range and B you got the same thing um, all for HPF or high pass filters 
Um, back over here, back to the sensitivity for A and B and subwoofer. It goes from minimum 5 all the way around to positive or plus 2 max. And these can really be, you know, acting like gains and stuff. So you, if you have a certain radio with a certain amount of pre out voltage, you can adjust it to that to get the right input to it, make it nice and loud. Uh, bass boost DB, like I said, goes from 0 to 18. This is for the subwoofer. And the next one over is also for the subwoofer and tell it what the frequency you want the subwoofer to, to run at. Normally, uh, I mean, there are ways to adjust the amps and stuff just right, but by default, start off at 80 hertz for sealed boxes or 50 hertz or lower on ported boxes. And it kind of adjusts it from there on, on how good it sounds or if it starts to sort and stuff. So anyway, um, uh, I thought there'd be a lot more to the settings and stuff, but it's actually pretty straightforward and easy. Uh, the manual does give you a little better uh, description of each little setting and everything. But anyway, uh, that was the beast of an amp. Uh, so, in essence, if you love the sound of the XR400 by 4 or the power of the XR600 by 1, but you don't have a lot of room to stick these amps, then you might go with this bad boy right here. This, anyway, this is the Kenwood Exelon XR900 by 5. I said it has a two year warranty, which is $4.99. And it is a really nice amp. If you're looking for crystal clear music with the right amount of bass, up to 1200 watts max or 600 watts RMS for, for bass subwoofer sub output, this probably the amp would be that for you. Anyway, uh, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up, um, like button down there. Uh, but if you have a question about anything, hit the, uh, leave, leave a comment in the comment section down, there, down below. Anyway, this is Paul. I appreciate you watching. You'll have an awesome day. And please subscribe.